What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and let's take a look at Android N. I've done so many videos on iOS 10, let's have a look at the competition and see what they're cooking up with their latest Android N beta. So this is beta 4, Apple's still on iOS 10 beta 1. Believe it or not, these firmwares are so similar. I was very surprised at how many similarities they do have. It's honestly really a game of catch up between the companies. They seem to be acquiring features from each other. First off, Raise to Wake is available on both. Android's version is a little better, Contrast Wake, which is basically a dimmer version. It's easier on the eyes, better on the battery life. But really, these firmwares look so similar now, especially with all the widgets being added to iOS, even the wallpapers that are default. Starting with control centers, Apple's changed the look up a little bit. They added some color, rounded it a bit, and even added 3D touch toggles that could provide a little bit more functionality, so shortcuts. Now, on Android's version, it's very, very sleek. You could expand it, of course, if you need more functionality, but there are shortcuts as well. Not 3D touch, but if you hold on an icon, it'll take you directly to the panel that correlates with that setting. And there is now a toggle for the flashlight. So that's great. I mean, the control centers are pretty dang similar, not too far apart. Android's is a little bit more customizable. There are pages too, very similar stuff. So taking a look at the notifications, they've both been reimagined. On iOS, you have a full interface that you can sit in and reply and stay in it until you choose to leave. On Android, when you reply, it quickly collapses and closes, which kind of sucks, but I love Apple's take on this. It's really great. But Android certainly has caught up and now does have a quick reply feature, just like it was available in iOS for a few generations already. And a new feature on Android N, just hold on a notification and you get these options to go ahead and silence your notifications. Google is actually taking on iMessage and FaceTime with their new Google Allo and Duo project. So not immediately available, not restricted to Android N, but it's certainly gonna be an iMessage competitor for Apple. Android, of course, has a clear all for notifications. Apple has finally caught up with that, and they are now able to clear all with a 3D touch on that little X, about time. Both interfaces for the settings are slightly tweaked. So on Android, you now have somewhat of a little preview for the individual setting, which you don't even have to go in to see. On iOS 10, Siri has been relocated to the main page mail contacts and calendars all have their individual tabs how exciting you now have the option to uninstall apps and hide them on iOS 10 just like you did before by disabling apps in Android however you don't actually remove them they're just temporarily disabled and hidden from plain view the iMessages application has been completely reimagined quick type is much better as it will actually provide you relevant results to questions that are being asked even locations stuff like that series are basically built in Whereas on Android N, you now have a customizable keyboard. You can put a photo in the background, the colors, it's really cool. And Apple catches up to Android in the terms of widgets. There's now one area where you can access all of your widgets from many different applications, but not only that, individual applications, the stock apps now have widgets as well. So there's a very limited amount of things you can do with them, but certainly it is progress. Uh, Android has had this for so long, so Apple is really, really late to that game, but hey, at least they did finally add some widgets. And on the contrary, Android N now supports pressure-sensitive displays. The golden feature from Android N has to be the split screen view, whereas it was only available on select devices before, now any Android N device can enjoy this awesome feature. So multitasking is now a breeze, you can run applications side by side. Now not all apps have to be optimized for it, they certainly will run better, but any application can be run like that, and that is what's super cool about it. This is one area I know Apple is holding back on, I really don't know why, it's ridiculous that we don't have this, but Android N just has a huge advantage with this split screen screen view. Also really cool is the ability to quickly jump into the app that you were last using with a double tap on the multitasking button. And Android N finally supports the ability to clear all in the task manager. Previously it was something that was only found on select devices. Apple, of course you gotta slide and do it all yourself, but Apple tells you it doesn't really matter in the end. Next up, Maps. It's received a huge update. It's a lot prettier. It's certainly a lot easier to read when using it. I've been using it for a little while. It pans and zooms and it's a lot friendlier on the eyes for sure. The interface is easier to use. The search function is down on the bottom now. So certainly an overhaul, but is it at Google Maps level? Certainly not. It shows traffic now, can reroute you, but Google's been doing this for years already. There's a new battery saving feature in Android N, Doze to Go, that cuts off all activities while you're moving, while your phone isn't being used, so no background processes. Also, there's a new Vulkan API for the graphics and a new compiler for apps that'll download them faster and install them faster. And I really can't say that Apple has made any improvements to battery or performance, not at all, actually. So next up, with Siri, Apple has opened up the API to developers, so she can now interact with third 
third-party applications, which is great. So this is something that Google Now has been doing for a while. And when it comes to the smarts, I would say Siri is still behind. Google Now can understand more chain commands. And even though there's third-party support, Siri just doesn't have the same results that Google now does. Both are pretty dang quick though, no complaints there. With the new Photos application in iOS 10, Apple does play catch up. So Android had Assistant View, which is basically memories, the new feature introduced in iOS 10 that'll show you trips, events in one area. Also facial recognition has been in Google Photos for quite some time now as well. Apple Music has been overhauled, completely new app, new interface. I personally prefer the old one, this one's just too big, but I can certainly see how a lot of people would like it. It's very easy easy to use, very bright. Google's version is very good as well. Really no complaints on either one. They're both good. So that's a pretty sweet Android N update, right? The only thing that sucks is that select small few amount of devices will actually get to run it. So iOS 9 is being run on 84% of the devices right now. Android 6 is only being run on 10% since release. That is absolutely crazy. And I was very disappointed to learn that Android really didn't do anything new to fix that problem that's been around forever. And guys, there it is. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Go easy on me. I mean, I haven't been using Android for very long, but I wanted to give you a quick summary of how these new betas compare. So these updates aren't anything monumental. They don't break too much new ground, but there are certainly some things I do love about each. With Android N, the multitasking, with iOS, the new control center, the widgets view, and all the new toggles. It's awesome, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Whatever it is, your choice, they're both good updates. Peace.